We're back here on the John Forcade Show. Listen, out here at Veterans Ford, they'll match it. Your IRAs, income tax rebate check up to $2,000. Again, at Veterans Ford, they'll match it. IRS income tax rebate check up to $2,000. Come find out all the details right here at Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Forcade Show. And uh, another one of our features we'll do this week is take a look at the top offensive linemen for the 2016 NFL Draft. And, John, you know, when you're trying to protect star quarterbacks in this league, those offensive linemen, they peel off the board real, real quickly. So we'll take a look at the list of my top offensive linemen. And right off the bat, I think the guy that's going to end up being the top player in this pick by the Tennessee Titans, he's my number one rated player. Jeremy Tunsil from Ole Miss. Ronnie Stanley, who I think is going to be a top 10 pick from Notre Dame. Uh, Taylor Decker from Ohio State, done an excellent job for them. Jack Conklin, who's a big physical guy from Michigan State. Jermaine Afedi, who's played both tackle and guard at Texas A&M. And in kind of a dead heat at the sixth spot between Cody Whitehair from Kansas State, who has played left tackle, but he's more an inside player. And Vidal Alexander from LSU, we don't have him on the list, but one of the guys too, Ryan Kelly, the center from Alabama. I think that's, that's a guy that could end up being a top 50 pick in this draft class, but right off the bat, you see the big tackles, the guys that can play on the left side, and to me, Tunsil's the pick for Tennessee. When you pick uh, uh, Marcus Mariota, you got to be able to protect him, and I think at this point in time, if Jalen Smith was healthy, I think that you might give him some consideration, but he's not. He's still coming off the knee injury. To me, I mean, Tunsil's the guy. It's hard to pass up a guy like that who's going to protect your quarterback's backside. After picking number one last year, you got a quarterback this year, you look at picking again number one, and who do you come up with? You got to go and say, I got to protect this guy right here. Uh, you know, if you don't protect your quarterback, it, with the best player in the draft, I think, is the tackle from Ole Miss. So uh, I look at it this way, Mike, and you know as well as I do, it's all about getting those guys up front. And let's just look what happened with the Dallas Cowboys. They built themselves an excellent offensive line with a bunch of draft picks. Great, granted, they don't have the greatest quarterback in the world back there. He can get hurt slipping on a banana peel, coming down to fight a fight. Instead getting up in the morning, getting out of bed, you know, Romo can get hurt. But it's not your offensive line's fault. But if you got a good offensive line, which I think Tennessee has to go get, you can't pass on this young man. If he's the guy out there, take him. You can always work with someone else. Getting they talk about maybe we want to get some draft picks and get some other guys. We we'll move down. You're crazy. Take this guy Tunsil and go with it. I don't think that they will get nearly the attention that they got a year ago because you had Winston and Mariota sitting at the top. Now, Jared Goff's a good player, but Cleveland, the team that really needs the quarterback, is sitting at the two spot. So, you know, their deal is, okay, even if a team would trade up for Goff, they could always get Carson Wentz. Correct. So I don't think that there's the push there, and I think basically the Titans are going to kind of have to sit with that draft pick. Ronnie Stanley, too, though, from Notre Dame, he's been – you know, I don't say this often, but Notre Dame players a lot of times are overhyped, but I think in this draft class. You mean they're soft? Well, whatever. No, I'm just kidding. They it's are soft, kind of soft, soft in my book. You know, but Ronnie Stanley, he has been a standout guy. He could have come out a year ago, decided to stay for another season at Notre Dame. Uh, I think the one guy that would have pressed the issue would have been Smith. But I think Ronnie Stanley ends up being a top ten pick. Quick-footed guy, long arms, and listen. Those Notre Dame quarterbacks, most people, once they got hurt, you didn't know who the world was playing quarterback from. They got protected well. Look, Notre Dame's always had big offensive <clears throat> linemen. It's sort of like looking at that Midwestern type, you know, the, the Michigans, the Ohio States. you got to throw Notre Dame in there because they're from the Northwest, Midwest, should I say, in that category. And they always going to get some linemen. There's no doubt they can get guys because they can recruit Notre Dame. I'm going to Notre Dame. The best <laughs> linemen, right. a lot of them go there. Uh, the scheme that they protect is a little different. That's what offsets scouts that look at and say, well, man, you know, you got a running quarterback and you don't use that drop back. We don't have a look. This guy right here is going to be in the NFL top ten Ronnie pick. Stanley's a good yeah, player. Stanley's a player. Some people will talk about maybe taking him over to Tunson from Ole Miss. Uh, I don't see that happening, but he is a good, good football player. They got a good group of offensive linemen coming out of this year. You mentioned a couple of guards in there. You mentioned a couple of centers possibility. Ryan Kelly, and yeah, that was the guy uh, I was going to bring up about the center guy. But there are some linemen this year that I don't care who's picking right now. When you pick the, the 10 that you threw on that board right there, I guarantee you those guys will be playing 7 to 10 years in the NFL. And none of those guys will last until the middle of the second right. round. I think you're looking at middle, 
maybe late second round. All those guys will be completely wiped off the top seven or eight offensive linemen. But Dal Alexander, we've seen him play a lot. Uh, grew up early in his life in Louisiana, then moved to Georgia. Uh, he's been a starter since his freshman mm -hmm. season. Has started at right guard, left guard, and then right tackle for LSU. I think he's an interior player. He, right. He's a guard. I, I don't think he has the foot quickness to play uh, the tackle position there. And I don't know that these football Olympics are built for him because he, he's a big mauler. He's a masher guy. He's a physicality guy. He's not going to go out there and run a five flat 40 yard dash. That's not him. Gerald Hawkins now is a different story. I think if anybody makes a run similar to what we saw Trey Turner do, because mm -hmm. Trey, you know, people looking at him late round pick, all of a sudden he goes to the combines and he shows them how quick he is. Gerald Hawkins was the best from an athlete standpoint on LSU's offensive line. For Vidal, the combine doesn't tell you what he can do. He can play football. Well, these scouts and these, these coaches are saying the same thing. If this kid can play, we watch enough film on him. Like, this, like we've heard, they're trying to get rid of the 40-yard dash. And there's some things that I, I, I agree with you that. can get rid of. It doesn't matter with certain things. Who cares about it? it it's definitely game day. Game day, you got equipment on. You running, Who's running a 40? They ain't no lineman I know ever run a 40-yard dash for any reason out there. Other than maybe, trailing the running right, back. Right, right. So, so if you can play, you can pass block, or you can run block, I guarantee you these guys are looking at it. They can care less about your speed and your, and your standing broad jump and things like that. They want to see can you pass block or can you run block that's the guys they go after and the combine doesn't tell you that they do. it doesn't, doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you anything same, about same thing with a wonder lick test i was over here somebody said about the, the wonder lick tech oh my god i just can't believe some of these guys that wonder lick test who cares about a wonder lick test if you go out there and play football you go pick the guy when you were coming out it was interesting that they didn't have one combine no, you, they didn't. you ran the country, so to speak, and, and yeah, so did. that was totally different than today. Yeah, it was. You know, we went to Tampa Bay, I went to Detroit, and went to Dallas, and, and, then, and then you had, and then you had, uh, you know, all these other uh, uh, people coming into your town looking at you. But yeah, it's totally different nowadays than it was back when I was playing. And no pro day. We had a pro you day, a but pro it was day? kind of a different pro day. It was, it was not really a pro day. It was just a get together. They didn't call it a pro day. Just team showed up when you know, when they let you know in advance. Hey, we coming there. Fifteen, twenty guys show up there. And, you know, I'm, I had to get out of the happy hour and run over to the field and, <laughs> and get ready to go run a 40-yard dash. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans 4. That's pretty good. <laughs>